I'm the director of products for Peaceful Operation. Thank you for coming to the site. Uh, today's topic is going to be two recent scientific uh, surveys, tests, and research papers that I think can have some, uh, can affect you and help you in your fight against bed bugs. Now the first thing I want to talk about is a question that is put to me a lot on my website is I'll see people that say, hey, my, they say I have bed bugs, my roommate is getting bit or my partner's getting bit, but I don't have any symptoms. Well, I don't think we have bed bugs. I, I'm not even sure, I'm not even convinced that there's bed bugs in the place. The landlord wants me to spend two, three hundred dollars to hire a pest control operator to come out and, and see if there are bed bugs there, but I'm not even sure we have them. Okay, now the first test uh, survey, the research paper that I want to talk about, was conducted by Chang Lo Wang, who I arguably is one of the most important entomologists in the last decade. He teaches now at uh, Rutgers University in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. But his team uh, went out into the, the low-income neighborhoods throughout uh, New Jersey. They went to uh, 2,300 low-income apartments, uh, structured over 43 buildings uh, in four New Jersey cities, right? So this was a really broad, encompassing um, survey. And what they found was nothing short of spectacular. And when I say spectacular, was the findings were that 12% of those buildings, those, those residents that they, they went to to take a look at, were, had bed bug infestations, which is high considering, you know, prior to uh, 1970, um, when the DDT was used as a pre pre predominant uh, pesticide, we almost all but eradicated bed bugs. You, you would find uh, an incident rate of, of about 10%. So it's a little high, but not abnormally high. What was really shocking in this study, though, I will say, is that 49% of the, the, the tenants, the residents that they interviewed, were unaware that they had a bed bug infestation. Now let's talk about why that is. Um, for some reason, we, we know that uh, the bed bug can carry 27 human pathogens, but there's never been a, 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 definable, a definable link between a bed bug uh, carrying uh, a human pathogen and transmitting it to a human host. So although they can not um, uh, make you sick per se, you won't, you won't contract the, uh, the illness, I believe that you, you will probably have a histamic reaction to that bite because they inject a, 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 what we would know as a, a coagulant um, into your bloodstream and, and that, uh, of course, some people would have an adverse reaction to it. So I think that that's part of it. But let's talk about where bed bugs come from and why is it that you would not know, you wouldn't realize that you had bed bugs in your house. Across the world, I think the, probably the most important thing that we need to remember is uh, Robert Usinger, who's arguably one of the pioneers of bed bug research, wrote back in 1966 in his seminal um, uh, piece on, on bed bugs, is that bed bugs are a nest parasite. Okay, so it's important to remember that um, Cymicidae, or Cymicidae, the, the, the family of bed bugs, that uh, we are aware of uh, contains 88 members. So if you think about that, this is a, a huge family. Of that family, only three are known to ha have associations with humans. So the large majority of bed bugs throughout the world feed primarily on bats and birds. And so these are avian specific uh, uh, parasites, nest parasites, um, that have come to evolve into really be really good at hide and seek and, and when you think about it you're dealing with birds right avian specific let me get up here to let you see this photo pretty closely now this is these are starlings and this is a starling house now if you are a bed bug and and this is your host your, your primary birds or your host where are you going to hide you're not going to hide uh on top of, of the birdhouse because you have natural predators such as ants, spiders, uh, you, you can dry out from the sun, uh, you know, uh, so you want to be somewhere inside of that, that enclosure 
but you don't want to be in the in the nest part because these birds have uh, very sharp uh, bills and they can get to you you would prefer to be right there in that crack if you if you are a bed bug you want a harborage you want to set up shop in that crack now bed bugs are not unlike uh, I mean bed bugs that, that focus on birds are not any different when they're in your bed they want to be in your cracks and crevices in fact according to uh, University of Indiana uh, Purdue in Indiana um, they say that 90 the bed bug spends 90% of its time hiding when you think about that that's a huge deal because that means that they only really come out to, to either mate or to feed right and considering the average feeding time is only 10 minutes they're not away from their cracks and crevices very long right? so that's very important so uh, I, wanted, I wanted to stress that because people say well I think I have bed bugs but I'm not sure and I, I'm not my somebody else is getting bitten but I'm not having any reactions the best thing that you can do is to set up a trap a passive trap to determine whether or not you actually do have an infestation if you're not seeing trails uh, bed bugs uh, typically will leave feed feeding trails on, along their feeding train uh, brownish reddish streaks that look like a, like a child took a crayon and just drew a straight line down down your sheet you know these are telltale indicators uh, that you have bed bugs but if you're not having that but you're still experiencing some bites and you have a concern then I recommend uh, using what is known as a passive monitoring pitfall or PMP now there's a lot of uh, companies that make them commercially which I think is unethical um, especially when you look at the very simple design here here are two models that are probably the most po popular the top one uh, the white one is known uh, the brand name is climb up uh, these sell for about $37 for a pack of 12 I believe on Amazon the bottom one is from a, uh, the, the brand name is uh, um, gosh what is it interceptor I can't remember now uh, I want to say it's it's a uh, gosh I can't remember but this one is sells for 12 of them for 50 bucks on, on Amazon now I'm going to show you in my next video I'm going to link it to here but I, I'm going to show you how you can go to Dollar General and buy some things for less than three dollars to, to make these uh, same thing okay but what I want you to to know the important the reason why I'm showing you this is because for many people who are s suspecting that they're having bed bugs but they can't prove it the passive monitoring pitfall is a very good way to find out the reason why these work is because on the very outside ring is a, um, a, a fabric basically where a bed bug can can climb up once they get over the top they fall into that little channel there and they're unable to get out their their legs uh, their little claw like appendages at the end of their feet cannot uh, gain purchase on smooth surfaces like plastic or ceramic or glass so they're so they're expected effectively once they get over the the top they're trapped and they can't get out now the reason why I'm bringing this whole thing up is because of the second uh, research paper that I read now this was a study uh, at Union College in uh, Lincoln Nebraska uh, the doctor who uh, spearheaded the group and I, I should say it's co-authored by a uh, scientist from uh, University of Florida so um, but the doctor who spearheaded this group her name is Corrine McNeil she's originally from Jamaica and she's not necessarily a bed bug researcher she I think her background is in sl uh, slugs and other mollusks but the reason why that's important is because she approached her study from uh, a novice like like much like we would ask a question what color do bed bugs prefer you know and she so she, what she her team did is they came up with a one by two centimeter tent of colored paper Get that a little closer here and they're different shades I think they, they did eight all together um, uh, ranging in colors from uh, lilac violet blue green yellow orange red and black and what they did is they just made these little tents and they put them in the center of the petri dish and then they let the bed bugs go and they, they kind of wanted to see which one that they would harbor under and uh, almost all the time the bed bugs preferred the darker colors particularly black and red and and they kind of avoided the brighter colors yellow and and green those wavelengths they, they tended to shy away from that and why that's important to you 
is because when you are building, I'm going to show you with the, I'm going to link a video to show you how to make these out of basically plastic bowls and some adhesive uh, athletic tape that you can get at the Dollar General store. When you make your passive monitoring pitfall, right? Now that we know what uh, Dr. McNeil found in her study, we're not going to go for a white light colored bowl. We're going to go for a darker colored bowl, a dark or a black or a red, because we now know that the studies indicate that bed bugs are more likely to go towards that type of uh, 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 color for 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 hiding. And it makes sense too when you think about the evolutionary nature of a creature that wants to spend 90% of its time hiding from its host who could very easily pluck it with its beak or uh, ants and spiders and cockroaches, other natural predators. All right. So this is some useful information and, and what hopefully what I'm able to do is read these 100 page dissertations, very dense scientific data, boil them down into easy to use digestible nuggets that you can actually implement in your fight against bed bugs. Again, my name is Joel Z. Williams, the Poor People's Advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my virtuous ways. Thank you.